all of my fins are sanded and sealed and sanded again and now we're ready to put them onto the rocket so if we look at the markings here all right down here at the aft end we've got these small marks here that go all the way around and they're up here at six millimeters from the aft end and this is where the aft fins are going to go so this is going to go on here like this okay um, and we're going to go ahead and roughen this up a little bit so at each one of those fin marks I'm just going to give a few strokes of some 100 grit sandpaper and you can use just about any sandpaper you like now while I'm doing this I'm going to go ahead and do one for the launch lug here Okay, and for the launch lug up here and I'll go ahead and do the forward fins as well so that's going to be this narrow band here okay now those wider bands are for the channels and we'll go ahead and do them as well And all of this is just going to help the glue adhere better between the tube and the respective parts. Okay, now the fins are going to go on like any other butt jointed fins here. Use some wood glue or some white glue. And here I'm just going to apply a thin bead. Don't want a whole lot there. All right, and then I'm going to apply this to the tube and then pull it back off again. And I'm going to wait 30 to 60 seconds on this and then put it back on. A little time has passed and the glue now has become a little bit tacky. And so now I'm going to put this back on exactly how I had it before. And now with the glue tacky, I can move this without the fin just flopping over. Okay, so here I can check its alignment against the other lines there. Um, I am going to use a fin alignment guide to make sure I get all these fins on straight. Um, this is a cardboard one that Apogee makes. There are several other manufacturers of these. Uh, you can also find uh, 3D print plans if you have access to a 3D printer. Okay, I'm just going to slide that in and that's going to help keep it perpendicular. Now I'm going to let that fin dry in that position for about five minutes and then I'll go on to the other fins as well. I'll do them off camera. My aft fins have all dried and now I'm going to add the channel piece and for this one we're using the smaller channel piece here that has two notches in it. Okay, so all these should be the same. And what we're going to do here is apply this so that the leading edge of that aft fin goes into the notch here. All right, and then this is going to go all the way up and should overlap just a little bit with the fin guide here. Okay. Now if we look down here, some of my fins came out a little bit crooked and I think what happened is my uh, fin guide shifted while it was drying. So if you do run into a problem like this and you don't want to have to break off the fin and redo it, what you can do is just modify this channel a little bit so that in the end this comes out even. Okay, is it's going to be much more important um, to keep this straight and in line with the main fins than with these little guys here. Okay, so I am going to start out though with this fin that's aligned exactly how it should be. 
And here, once again, we're going to use some wood glue. Alright, nice thin bead. And I'm going to even that out so it gets up onto and even a little bit into the V-notches there. I'm just going to turn this over and I'm basically just going to back that in until I hit a lot of resistance. Um, now depending on how narrow you got your fins to come out, uh, you may need to get you may be able to get it up a little farther. But I'm going to use this one kind of as a general guide for the rest of the fins. Okay. So I'm not doing the, the tacky glue trick here. I'm just putting this directly on because it doesn't have a lot of leverage here. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry for a few minutes and I will continue the other ones off camera, although I will show you what I'm going to do with uh, the offset fin there that I had. Now to repair or at least place the channel um, for the fin that's off here, uh, first of all I'm going to measure what we have from the aft end here for the good one. Alright, so the tip of that channel is at about 19.3 centimeters. And that's what I'm going to want to match on this one. So here I am also going to find 19.3 centimeters. So we're just going to make a little mark here. So in order for this end to be at the right place, all right, this is going to go down. Now like I said it's off center there and that's I don't want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take my hobby knife here and I'm going to cut off this part here so that right now it just has one side to it okay now you think well now it's going to look all off balanced it won't because what we'll do later here is fill in all these gaps um, even the one here that fits correctly with some um, contour putty and that will hide mistake there. Okay, so with this one, I'm just going to go ahead now and add some glue to it. Okay, once again we'll smooth this along the entire length. And especially get that one little corner there because it's going to take that whole part there, that's the only glued spot for it. Alright, so I'm going to place this within the channel guidelines, making sure that the forward end there is in the right place. Okay, now you see again it's not actually touching there, but that's okay. We'll account for that when we do the final touches. So I'm just going to hold this here for about 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to go ahead off camera and do the remaining two channels as well. Now that the aft channels are in place, we'll go ahead and put on the main fins. And these are going to go into the other end of the channel here like this. Now that the rear taper on the main fins is not as shallow as the forward taper and so you may, again you may find that this does not fit very well all right you got a couple of options here you can either leave it the way I've got it here so it goes in but we have a little bit of gap but we can fix that with contour putty you can take a small file and just file the, the part of the leading or the trailing edge here that will fit in so the rest of your trailing edge will look the way you've got it 
but you'll have a, a smaller part that will just kind of overlap there. Okay, um, Or you can just cut this back. So I'm going to use the first of my options there. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of a gap in it. Okay, so like we did with the aft fins, I'm just going to give myself a thin bead of glue here. All along the edge. Okay, I'm going to place the fin where I want it. So right along those two fin lines there. Okay, touch that down, bring it back up, let that dry for 30 to 60 seconds, and then we'll come back and put it back on. Alright, so my glue should be tacky now, and we're just going to put this right back where we had it. Okay, and I'm making sure that I've got the leading edge here centered within the next channel marking there. Okay, and here again I'm going to let this dry for about five minutes at least, and then I'll do the other fins off camera. Here the main fins have all been glued on, and our last structural part here will be to attach the forward channels here. So these are the longer ones that only have a notch at one end. As we did with the aft channels, we'll just put a bead of glue on here. Does not need to be thick. Okay, and just smooth that over the whole thing. And then excess glue can just be wiped off. Okay, and so now, let's see if I can move this over a little bit. Um, we're going to put this up against the leading edge. Okay, and then this is simply going to extend in that little channel guide here. And I'm going to hold this in place again for about 30 to 60 seconds and then I'll move on to the other three off camera. Here the last of the channels have been put on. Now in according to the instructions they suggest filling in the gaps and such either with a wood filler or with um, contour putty, plastic model putty, and then putting on the fillets. Okay, I'm going to do that in reverse because you can also use glue to fill in some of these spaces. And I also like to use the contour putty to fill in bubbles that get left behind sometimes on glue fillets. So I'm going to go ahead, um, first of all let this dry, and then we'll do fillets on everything first, then do the putty, and then we can touch up fillets and putty areas as needed. Here I'm ready to apply the fillets, and this is just going to be like any other rocket except that it's going to be a really long fillet here. Um, and as I usually do, I'm going to do this on facing fins, so we'll do this fillet all the way up first, and then this fillet all the way up second, and let those dry. So I'm just going to start by running a bead of glue here. I can't get the entire rocket under the camera right now, but it's going all the way up. Okay, and I've got some paper towels here so that I can wipe off the excess as I go along. some tissues here to get rid of this excess glue. It's not actually part of the fillet. I'll also remove any glue from on top of the channels. Okay, 
Okay, and anywhere else that we don't want the glue to be right now. So, like I've got some up here on the trailing edge. We'll just trim that back. Okay, and then up here on front, again, we have a lot on top of the channel. And we've also got this excess amount right here on the body tube. I'll remove that. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side here. Excess glue here. All right, I'm going to let this dry and I will finish the other fillets off camera. When I come back, we'll then use um, the putty to fill in any of the remaining gaps. Here all of my fillets are complete, and I don't want you to think that I've forgotten about the launch lugs, because one of them goes here and the other one's going to go down at the aft end. But I'm intentionally leaving these until a little bit later, so that I've got more room to get in with sandpaper and such when we do the um, filler and any finalizing of the fillets. So, launch lugs will be coming up, but we're going to do that after we finish off filleting everything here. All of my glue fillets have dried, although we still do need to put on the launch lugs, but we'll do that after this next step, and that's to add um, some filler putty to any place that's not filled up with glue, basically. So some of these, um, the notches here need to be filled in, uh, the ones where I needed to adjust it a little bit here. Um, I'm using Tester's Contour Putty, and there are several other manufacturers as well. This is a water-based product, so it's non-toxic, it's easy cleanup. Um, so basically all we have to do here is just start at one of our uh, fin lines and just go down and fill in the stuff that has holes in it. So this stuff, basically you just add a little bit to whatever you need to fill and then you smooth it in with your finger um, it gets sticky very quickly so you need to do the, any movement you want to do with your uh, finger there you have to do very quickly otherwise it starts beating up but it takes about an hour or two to dry to the point where you can sand it without ruining the, the fill you just made. All right, now I'll come back here. This is an easier one. Since all we have to do is just fill that hole there. Okay, and then coming back to our aft fin. Same thing, we'll just fill in that little hole. Okay, and I'm going to continue doing this around the entire circumference of the rocket, but I'll do that off camera. While the contour putty is drying, we can go ahead now and put the launch lugs on, since I didn't find any place in my fillets that needed some additional attention. So we already sanded the regions here where the launch lugs will go. And now we just need to do the same thing for the two launch lugs. And like before, we just need a couple of strokes here using just about any sandpaper you prefer. Okay, and then we are going to use wood glue once more attach those okay so first we'll do the forward launch lug here just center that between the lines and then we'll 
we'll do the aft launch lug the same way. Hands a little shaky today, not sure why. Right, and then that one's going to go back here. Again, just get it between those two lines. Okay, and then go ahead and sight down the body tube. All right, so I can already see that one's a little bit crooked. But these should be in line with each other and in line with the body tube itself. Okay, check it from the other direction. Okay, I think that just needs to be moved ever so slightly there. Alright, so now we'll just let these dry as well and when we come back um, we'll check the, the fill uh, or check the filled areas and then also put fillets on the launch lugs there. I have the holes filled in with contour putty and I've also added fillets to my launch lugs here. So this is ready for priming. And talking about primer and paint here, um, according to the instructions they just have us paint the whole thing white. But if you look on the box it shows a blue on blue color scheme. So I get this under here. Like this. Okay, so I'm going to go with something similar to this. Uh, I'm using a little bit brighter blues because that's what I have on hand. Okay, but uh, you can either go with the white color scheme or go with your own color scheme. This is your rocket. Paint it the way you want. I will go ahead and uh, Put on a couple layers of primer here and I'm not going to show a whole lot of detail in the painting and priming. I'm just not set up to video that. But I will show the intermediate stages here. All right, I can't show the whole model at once here but we'll kind of scan it back and forth. This has had four coats of primer and as soon as that primer completely dries I'll go on to add the blue base coat. Here I have the entire rocket painted. Um, and you'll notice my colors are a little more saturated than what are shown on the box cover. But it should be easy to see even though it is a blue rocket this way. Okay, so I'm going to let this completely dry overnight and then uh, when I come back we'll put the decals on. My paint has dried overnight and it looks ocean-like. Right, as I said, this the, the illustration for this um, has much more muted colors, but I didn't have any of those available, so I just went with what I had here. I'm actually going to let this uh, continue curing here for at least another 12 hours, because even though it's dry, it still feels a little bit soft to me. And I want to make sure this is completely dry before we start the decals. Now we're ready for the vinyl decals here, and I've got this ready to go. Okay, I'm going to pull the nose cone out a little bit. If you want, you can completely pull your nose cone out, especially if you've done like me and have not yet attached the shock cord. Okay, because our first two decals are going to go right at the end of the body tube here. I'm just going to reposition things a little bit. Okay, now for vinyl decals, I like to use a little bit of soapy water to help lubricate the decal and allow me to reposition it. So this is just a, a small basin of room temperature water with a single drop of generic dishwashing liquid in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, um, the first decal is this metallic strip. And I'm just going to dip that into the soapy water. And this just prevents the uh, adhesive from grabbing so well. Now this is going to go right at the edge of the body tube. 
I like to start these on the side of the launch lug so that if you got a little gap or a little overlap, you won't see it on the launch pad. All right, and I'm just going to work my way around here. And I'm keeping just a little bit of tension on it to help keep the bubbles out. this all the way around and then if you need to you can pull it up and reposition it and having the wet um, backing there keeps it from pulling your paint off. All right, that went on really easily and the next one is this gray strip and this is going to go directly aft of the silver strip. So the same way here, I'm just going to dip this in the water. And I'm going to start this at the same spot. So right about there. Okay, again, keep a little tension on there, and we want to get it right next to that silver strip. Um, if you really want to make sure you don't have paint showing, you can overlap it by just like half a millimeter. Right. And that one came out just a little bit off. So you can either say, well, that's close enough for me, or you can reposition it here. So I'll just put a little more tension on that and bring it to that point. Okay, now I'm going to take a tissue. You can also just use a uh, a washcloth or a paper towel and I'm just going to squeegee the excess water and air out all the way around here. Okay, And you can also use your finger here. If you feel or see air bubbles, just squish them to the nearest edge. Alright, next we have these black decals. Um, there are four of them here on the sheet and these are going to go in between the uh, channels there um, all the way around. So what the instructions say to do is um, go ahead and dip them in the water here and then measure them against that gap and you'll probably have to trim it as you go along here. Now these are going to go at 3 and 7 eighths or 98 millimeters from the forward end of the body tube. scissors handy here. So I'm going to take my first decal here and peel that off and put that in the water. Okay, I'm going to find my little mark right there. So I'm going to turn this around, I think. So there's my mark. Right, I bring that around. To right there. I'm going to use my fingernail to make a little indent there. I'm just going to cut this at that indentation. And then I'll put this right back on again. Just enough to cover the mark. Okay, so just like that. And I'm going to do the other three black strips off camera and then come back. 
I have all of the black strips done and now we have these yellow strips and these are going to go four millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch behind the black ones and we're going to do this in kind of the same way All right, now this decal is also four millimeters wide so I'm just going to eyeball this and give it its own width of space here and my black came out just a little bit crooked on a few of those probably have a one millimeter measuring error or so I'll try to compensate here. Oops, that one moved on me. Okay, and just like with the black, I'm going to do the rest of these off camera as well. Right. Now I've got the yellow ones on as well, and then just like we did with the forward decals here, I'm just going to squeegee out any excess water and get the air bubbles out. Now your kit may vary. Uh, mine actually came with extra yellow and uh, chrome decals here, uh, but there's no indication that these go on to the model, and so these appear to be uh, just appear to be spares. Okay. So the next one we're going to do is uh, the Aerospatial. Um, these are water slide decals. Okay, and they are going to go roughly um, along the channel here on two sides. So pick whatever two sides you want. I am going to change out the water here though because I don't want the soapy water for a water slide decal. I've exchanged the water for clean water now. Um, some people like to add just a little bit of white glue to that. Uh, I'm not going to do that. And now I'm going to cut this decal so that we have roughly the same white space here above on both sides. Now what we'll do um, is soak these in the water for about 20 seconds so that the water gets saturated and these are going to go one inch or 25 millimeters below the yellow stripe. Okay so I'm going to orient myself here. There's my launch lug side so I want one here 90 degrees from the launch lug All right, I'm just going to give myself a little tiny tick mark here. Okay, now I'm going to check this by just seeing if it's going to slide yet. So I'm just putting a little tension on it. Not quite yet. This is a really long decal, so we're going to have to be extra careful with it here. We don't want it to buckle or rip. Okay, 
It's just starting to slip there. And just need to make sure it's doing it throughout the length. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to just ease a little bit out over the edge there. I'm going to find my little mark that I made, and that's where the A is going to go. Okay, and now I'm just going to very gently pull on the paper on the other end. And just use the channel and the fin as a guide. Okay, just like that. And then take the tissue here. And just squeegee out the air and excess water. Okay. And now we're going to do the same thing, 180 degrees from that. Okay, let's put the other decal in there. Once again, I'm going to measure an inch. Just put a little tiny mark there. again I'm going to line this up with the channel and my little tick mark there and again I'm sliding that paper out out the air and water. Alright, and that's it for the decals. Um, some people like to use a clear coat, especially over water slide decals. If you wish to do so, I recommend waiting at least 24 hours, preferably 48, and then on your clear coat, use an acrylic based clear coat. They tend to have less uh, negative interactions with previous paint and with the decals themselves. All right, so I'm going to clear away my, my decal stuff here and we will do the final assembly of the recovery system. The parachute is pre-strung with its shroud lines here and so the first thing we need to do is simply gather those shroud lines up on one finger like this and then with your other hand Grab the middle of the parachute sheet, okay, and then pull everything taut. So you've got loops going around this finger, and you're holding the other side with this finger, okay, and then all of those corners should be pretty close to lining up with each other. And you can change the relative length on either side here to help line those up. Now, if you're going to go by the instructions here, they're going to tie this directly to the nose cone. And to do that, you simply pass your loops here through the eyelet, open them back up again, and then you can either pass the entire parachute through these loops. All right, so you would take it like this, pass it through the loops and pull it taut. Um, or you can do what it's trying to do right now, is just take the nose cone, pass the loops over them, and pull it taut from there. Now if you've seen any of my other videos though, you know that I don't like to tie parachutes to my rockets. Instead, I prefer to use snap swivels. All right, so here I'm just going to go ahead and reposition my chute, make sure everything's good again. All right, I'm going to grab my loops here. And throughout this time, I'm going to hold on to it 
down here with my little finger so the lengths don't change. This is a snap swivel that you would find in the fishing department of uh, department stores or sporting goods stores. The size of the swivel itself doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Uh, most of the swivels you're going to find um, are more than robust enough to handle the weight of this rocket. What is important is that the snap part here is big enough to fit over the eyelet of the nose cone. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. So the first thing I'm going to do here is on the swivel side where we've just got a loop, I'm going to pass the loops of my shroud lines through that still hanging on with my little finger down at the bottom here. Right, I'm going to open those loops back up again. Okay, So now I've got loops here, shroud lines back here, and I'm going to pass the entire swivel through the loops, pull the loops downward, and then pull that up taut. Alright, now I'm going to come back to my parachute here and make sure all my corners are still aligned, which they are. All right. If for some reason it shifted, you can simply loosen this up and try again. Once you've got it though where you need it, then I recommend adding just a little touch of white glue or wood glue to that knot. And that'll just help it lock in place and keep it from unraveling later. Okay. Now, when I'm ready to fly this, I just clip this on to the eyelet, All right, cinch down the clip, and the, the clip here needs to be big enough that it can move freely on here. So this one is just barely so. This is the smallest that I would use with this nose cone. A bigger one won't hurt anything as long as you don't get it caught in between the body tube and the shoulder of the nose cone. Okay. But this means you can take this off when you're just displaying your rocket. A lot of rocketeers don't like to store parachutes in the rocket. Um, but it also helps relieve torsional stress as the, the parachute is bringing your rocket back down. It almost invariably spins and that tends to wind it up. In fact, this is naturally trying to do that. And having the swivel part here helps relieve some of that torsional stress and keeps your parachute inflated. Now, put that aside for just a moment. And the last little piece of construction we need to do is to attach the shock cord to the nose cone. So just go ahead and pull your shock cord back out from where we had it stored. Okay, here you're just going to pass this through the eyelet. Tie a double knot or two half hitches into there. All right, and then pull on that from all sides so that you get a good cinch down knot there. All right, if you have more than about a quarter inch or six millimeters on that, trim it back, but not all the way to the knot. And that just helps keep it from getting caught between the shoulder of the nose cone and the body tube. And then like we did with the shroud lines, once you've got that where you want it, go ahead and just put a little dab of white glue or wood glue on the knot to help keep it in place. Here's my finished rocket. And this came out rather well, even though, the, like I said, the colors are kind of bright given what this actually is. Uh, and this did take quite a while to build because we had to have a lot of time spent waiting for fins and channel pieces and things like that, the treatment of the fins and the sanding and everything. Um, so the, the video that takes about two hours to watch in total uh, represents um, many, many hours of work. But you can actually get a really nice looking rocket and uh, although you do have these channel pieces and some, some tricky sanding, uh, it's not too difficult. It's just time consuming. So I hope you had fun building this and have a great flight and a safe recovery. And please stay tuned for more of my videos.